Thank you, Congressman Ginta. And thank you to all of you for being with us today. Thank you to my colleagues, Republicans and Democrats, who have joined together in the bipartisan task force to combat the heroin epidemic. The opioid ep epidemic has grown to historic proportions. Our medical providers are struggling to keep up with the flow of overdoses entering the clinics and to secure treatment for those in need. Our law enforcement and first responders have taken on the burden of responding to more and more potentially dangerous situations when a call for help comes in. And these calls are becoming more and more frequent. Statistics now show that more Americans are dying from drug over overdoses than do in car crashes. And as Congressman Ginta said, in our home state of New Hampshire, the opioid epidemic sadly continues to grow. 2015, the number of drug deaths in the Granite State exceeded 400, far surpassing the current record of fatalities set last year at 324. And without quick action, these numbers will continue to rise. In New Hampshire, we face a particularly deadly combination. We have the nation's highest per capita addiction rate, but the second lowest treatment capacity. Just last week, I highlighted the tragic results that can occur as a result of lack of treatment options. In telling the story on the floor of the house of Amber, the stepdaughter of a dear friend of mine, Chris Blevins from Manchester, who passed away at just 22 years old. While incarcerated and craving treatment, a bed finally did become available for Amber at a wonderful treatment center called the Farnham Center, respected and sought after but the prison would not let her out to take that bed. And meanwhile, the prison itself offered no recovery services, and when Amber was released, the bed was no longer available. She died of a heroin overdose, lacking treatment, and without support. Once someone does get treatment, it's not the end of the road. Frank and I, Mr. Ginta, have learned as we've traveled around the state meeting with treatment and people in recovery that substance use disorders can often send patients into relapse, and it's vital that proven evidence-based treatment methods are available for patients all across the country. And that's why our conversation today is so important. At the federal and state level, legislators and medical professionals are working to develop the best practices for treating substance use disorders. These decisions need to be guided by the latest research so that those who seek treatment have the best possible chance for a full recovery. I look forward to hearing from our panelists about their work and research. We need to know what works and just as importantly, what is not working so that we can make the best decisions in this bipartisan task force. We want to develop best practices and share them across this country. I was proud to introduce the Stop Abuse Act, again, a bipartisan bill to bring together our federal agencies to coordinate our response. We can work with physicians, dentists, prescribers, pharmacists, experts in the field of pain research and addiction, representatives of the mental health treatment community, the addiction community, pain advocacy groups, and develop best practices for pain management and prescription medication. Our legislation will bolster prescription drug monitoring program, and I'm particularly happy to have our colleague, Representative Jackie Walorski, who has an important bill for veterans on in that regard. I thank you for coming together. No single bill will provide the silver billet for this challenge, but by working together in a bipartisan manner, I'm confident that we can pass legislation that will start to change the tide of this epidemic. Thank you, and I yield back.